Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to paint mountains three different ways. So I have a 16 by 20 inch canvas set up here that I've just divided into threes or into thirds. So I can give you three different ways to paint some nice, simple mountains that can definitely um, add some interest to your landscape paintings. So again, I'm gonna be using a 16 by 20 inch uh, canvas. Um, for my tools and materials, I will be using acrylic paint. I have titanium white, a couple, <laughs> a bunch of it, just in case I need to switch colors. Uh, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, green oxide, deep yellow, burnt sienna, which sometimes I call rust. I have ultramarine blue, as well as cobalt blue. That'll be for my paint. For my tools, I have a plastic palette knife that has two different um, lengths on it. You don't need one with two different um, length angles. You can just use a regular palette knife if you want to, but I like this because it's flexible and it gives me different options. And then I have four brushes from my personal brush line and you can get this in my shop too. Um, so four brushes for my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch as well as a half inch wide flat bristle brushes. Then I have a large um, blender brush. This is kind of like a filbert brush because it's got a rounded top, but it's shorter, the bristles are shorter, and it's a blend of natural bristles as well as synthetic bristles. So it'll be nice and sturdy and do some good blending for us. And then I have a number eight shader. This is a synthetic bristle. It is similar to a bright brush, only my bristles are shorter. So again, they're more stable. And those are the brushes I'm gonna be using. You can certainly switch yours up if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as some kind of towel for drying them. And I will put down below in the video description a couple of resources for you. I'll have the resource to my shop so you can purchase um, the, the same brushes if you'd like to or the palette or other stuff in there that will help you um, have a similar outcome as mine, as well as I'll put a uh, link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So if you want to print that and use it as a visual reference as you go through the painting process, that will be there for you. So I'm going to get right into painting what will be the first step to these landscapes, which is going to be my skies. So I'm going to use my large bristle brush to do this. I'm going to have three different landscapes. One is going to, or mountain ranges. One is going to be like a really rocky mountain range. I'm going to have a blue sky. Then I'm going to have almost like rolly hill type of um, mountains. I'll do that one a little bit more sunsetty. And then I'm going to have a beautiful snow capped mountain range, which is going to have a nice bright blue sky. So I'm going to start with the top one. I'm going to be using a little bit of my um, ultramarine blue and white on my brush at the same time. I'm just going to go left to right. And then I'm going to make it a little bit lighter as I come down the canvas. I'm going to only bring my um, skies down about halfway down these canvases. Um, actually, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of cobalt blue as well. I like my cobalt blue in my skies. There we go. It gives me a couple of different tones in there. And as I come down towards what is going to be um, where it's going to meet the the mountains, I'm just putting a little bit more white on my brush. So I'm coming down a little bit further than halfway on this one. Um, you could bring it all the way down if you wanted to, but this is where I'm starting with this one. And then I just blend out those colors a little bit with a, a very light pressure on my brush to um, get it as soft as I want. So the next one, I'm gonna have a little sunsetty. So I'm gonna start with my dirty brush up at the top. So I've got um, a little bit of cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and white. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more of those three colors on my brush so I can start this one. And because I have um, just drawn a line on my canvas, I will bump into <laughs> the, the other area, which is fine. This is just an exercise, so don't feel that you have to do anything Perfect. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and burnt sienna. So just a little bit of the burnt sienna on my brush. And this is going to give me just the little hint or hue of a sunsetty type of sky. I don't really want to go all out on the sunset. I just wanted to give a little um, atmospheric dimension as I am building my 
my mountains. And again, I'm gonna bring this about halfway down. I'm picking up a little bit more white and I'm actually gonna probably pick up a touch of yellow as well. So if you're doing this real kind of quick sunsetty sky, if you have a ton of blue left on your brush, you're gonna to wanna to wash it because I'm gonna go into the yellow and if I had blue on my brush, I would end up with some green in my sky. So I'm just washing my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white and just a little tiny dot of my yellow. And this will give me just a tiny bit of that hue of a sunset. And if, it, if you want, you can add, I feel like I wanna add a little bit more of the burnt sienna. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is for my next sky, I want it to be super blue. Um, so I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna be using mostly cobalt blue. And then again, I'm just gonna bring it down about halfway. So cobalt blue, and this is probably gonna look a little streaky simply because I'm using such a, a light background. So I'm gonna start with cobalt blue and then I'll bring in a touch of white just to soften it a little bit. And you could do a couple of coats on it, but again, I'm just really going for something that's gonna give me um, a nice base so I can show you how to make some cool some cool mountains. So again, just using some cobalt blue at the moment, and in a second, I uh, will introduce a little bit of white. Um, again, I'm just bringing it about halfway down my canvas. So now I'm picking up just a touch of white with my cobalt blue, just to soften that bottom. And then I'll just go back and forth, left to right, to get it to smooth out. So that is a great start for that. Brought it all the way as far down as I wanted. Nice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building my mullins, which is kind of a couple little streaks there. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top one. I'm gonna be uh, just kind of loosely putting the mountains in place. Um, I feel like I want to start this one with, I feel like I wanna start it with my large bristle brush. This one I'm gonna have um, some kind of dramatic mountains at the top and it's just gonna uh, come towards the viewer um, into just a grassy pine tree kind of landscape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, get myself just a brown tone. So I'm gonna just use my burnt umber to put my mountains in place. You can really have whatever kind of mountain range you want. I'm making sure that this is dry before I start. There we go. Um, so I'm just gonna have fun and give myself just you know, whatever type of little profile that I want. I'm gonna have maybe one coming up like that and then just jutting across and then maybe a couple little peaks in through here. So I don't, I, I'm doing pretty clean um, edges at the top. And if this brush wasn't the right brush for you to do this, you could certainly um, move into a smaller brush. And then I'm just gonna kind of pop down in to here, I don't want to have any mountaintop below where my sky ends. So this is uh, giving me just a good place to, to bring that. So once I've got that um, area in there, then what I can do is I can just take my brown and I can use this dry brush type of scumbling effect just to kind of bring these hills or these mountains down. And then what I'm gonna do is as I get towards the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna start picking up some of my, some of my green. So green oxide and brown is gonna bring me down towards, towards the grassy land or whatever land I'm gonna be putting down at the bottom. So just know that these, these mountainscapes that I'm showing you here, I'm really just showing you ways that you can incorporate mountains into your landscapes so they can either add drama or interest or depth. When I get to this next one, that's one that's gonna really add a bunch of depth into your, um, into your paintings. The one, this one could really be a focal point. You could have um, these mountains really be nice and powerful and be the focal point to, um, to that particular um, composition. So that's good for that one. The next one in through here, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. This is just gonna be my base coat. This one in through here, this is gonna be more of a hilly type of um, landscape that goes way off into the distance. 
So what I'm going to do is I am going to start way off in the distance with um, just a couple of little bumps and then as I come towards the viewer I am going to make my hills um, more prevalent and darker. So I'm going to start with faint colors in the background and then as I come closer to the viewer I'm actually going to switch my brush to my half inch because I feel like I'm going to um, want that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, and you can go with the same color palette. It doesn't have, this is just a practice run. So uh, teaching you how to um, understand these, this process. So if I wanted to say, just use um, the, the brownish kind of tones, I know that as the color gets closer to the viewer, it's going to be more saturated. So if I'm going to use brown, I could take brown from my far away colors and add a little bit of white and blue to it. So a little bit of white and blue to my color mixture. And I've got a, I'm doing it on my palette so you can see where I'm headed with this. It's gonna end up being a pretty faint kind of tan type of a color. It could, you could even add more ultramarine blue. You could even add, um, you know, make them in a purpley kind of color, whatever you want. So once I've got that kind of dull color, I can say, all right, I'm gonna have a couple of like little rolly hills back in the distance, something like this. And then once I've got that, that my, um, established on the top, I can just wipe my brush off a little bit and allow for this to just kind of fade down. So it's a little bit darker at the top and then I allow it to fade down a little bit. I'm gonna put a little, little one back in through here as well, just so you can kind of see where I'm headed with this. And then as I come towards the viewer or down the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna make that color a little bit darker and richer. So I can keep adding brown and or green to it. So I think I'm just gonna add brown to it for now. And then as I get closer to the viewer, I will add more green to it. So if I want another little hill or mountain in through here to kind of close off those guys, I can put that in there and then just fade it down with a kind of a dry brush effect in through here. So again, that's the same color I did up there, only now I've got a little bit of more brown on it. So you don't have to, um, if you have little vacant spots, don't worry about those right now. I'll show you how to fill those in in a future step. Right now I'm just kind of establishing where I want those hill or mountain tops to go. And then I can make it even a richer color by putting in a little bit of green with that brown. So I'm just taking that dull color and continuing to make it brighter or more uh, saturated as it comes towards the viewer. So this is a little bit darker and has a little bit more green in it. So I can take it and just kind of put these little hill or mountain tops, however many you want to put in there. And you can see how I'm leaving some some air or some breathing room within those within those mountains. And I just try and make them so they're not all the same exact. Now I'm just gonna pick up some green on my brush to give myself some of these, um, these tones that are closest to the viewer. And again, I'm gonna make this a little bit more sunset-y as, um, as I develop it a little bit more, but I just wanna show you how to give those rolly hills going back. So that's looking good for me on that one. And then the next one I'm gonna do is gonna be more of, just make sure that's dry, more of like a snow-capped type of mountain. So again, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use this half inch bristle brush to start it. We'll use our um, palette knife and the other fun brushes to finish it out later. I'm gonna, again, just start with brown just to give myself the idea of where I want these to be. And these ones I kind of want to be a little bit more like they've got peaks on them. So like they're, you know, got some great places for snow to sit. <laughs> so I'm gonna just kind of start by telling myself where I want them to go. And again, I need each, I need everything to land in or above that, uh, wherever I stopped my sky. So you could make yours any which way that you want. Maybe this one goes in through here. Right now I'm just kind of establishing the tops of these. And then maybe I've got another one that comes way up almost to the top of my canvas. 
and you can bump it going down. Don't feel that you have to do the same exact one as I'm doing. Just kind of bumping those down and then maybe I'll do another little one in through here. And then for me on this one, I'm just gonna kind of use that brown and um, as I did with the other ones, just kind of rub it down so it blends or it gets softer as it comes down into the canvas or into the um, into the landscape itself. So something like that. And you could even do a one in front if you wanted to. If I wanted to add another one in through here, I can take this and just kind of make it so I see that there's going to be one in front of that. So maybe that's your um, your dominant one and all the other ones are kind of just a little bit less important. <laughs> I'm going to now pick up some brown with a little bit of that grayish tone that I used back here just to um, kind of get myself down into the grassy land. So um, brown plus a little bit of that grayish tone, something like this. And I'm going to add additional tones to it in a little while. This is just, again, starting me, getting me where I want to go. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of green and black. So green and black is just going to kind of close out the bottom of this one. And they look pretty messy at this point, but this is how I'm going to just start them so I can understand where I want everything to go. And it just helps me kind of plan out the um, the strategy for the whole thing. So just, again, putting some green and black in here. And sometimes I like when I'm doing the initial layers, doing them messy because it, accidents will happen or things will show up that I didn't plan on. And that helps me build a more interesting landscape. So now I'm gonna go back up to the top one and I'm gonna start um, identifying some of those those mountains. So this one I want to look pretty rocky um, and to have maybe some you know some good light maybe it's a morning light or something over on the left hand side. So I am going to use my palette knife. Mm, do I want to use my palette? No actually I'm going to uh, I'm going to use my number eight um, shader. I'm going to put some dark uh, bluish tones over on the shadow side of the mountains. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna and black to it. So this is going to give me a nice deep dark blue. So we'll call it like almost like a, a midnight kind of blue type of color. Something like this. You could just go um, blue and black, but I think the burnt sienna helps to kind of give it a little bit more um, earth warmth. <laughs> My official descriptions of colors. So I've got a, a nice kind of deep dark blue on my brush and I can establish, let's say I want there to be some shadow over here on this hill or this mountain over here. I can take that dark blue and I can create a shadowy side of that hill. It's awesome if your paint is a little transparent as mine is because it will take on some of those tones of the first layer. And I can even, like in through here, I can, I can tell the viewer where the front part of that mountain is. So you can just keep moving your line wherever you want. And now this becomes the front part and that becomes the side part. And I can, establish whatever kind of range that I want. I can have this mountain, whatever this is, casting a shadow on the one next to it too. So I can put like a little shadow in through here if I wanted, or maybe that represents a little valley within that mountain range. Maybe there's clouds in the sky, so you can have little dark spots on top of a mountain as if there's a cloud way up in the sky that's casting a shadow onto the mountain. So allowing yourself to um, just imagine what is making a shadow, where is it being cast? So it doesn't just have to be on the dark side of the hills or the mountains, it can be caused by other stuff. So if I want this to kind of look like a peak in through here, I can take and put it dark at the top, and then I can kind of pull down these little streaks. And that's gonna give me some light spots um, that are kind of looking like they might be um, of a rock formation kind of thing. 
I can do the same thing like over in through here. I can just take, not do the whole thing, but maybe just some little, um, some little streaky kind of marks. And then if I want there to look kind of like there's a valley somewhere in through here, I can take this dark blue and I can put a little valley that's being shadowed by this whole um, mountain in through here. If I want the, the land to look like it's kind of, um, I'm going to have some pine trees and stuff coming in through here, but I want it to look like it's kind of going down into the, um, into the valley. So I'm going to put a couple additional little dark marks, something like this. And I'm going to come back in a few minutes and put some highlights as well and change the, the color of the fronts of these and make them look a little bit more rocky. But this is um, establishing those shadowy marks and even down in through here. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of green and that dark blue. And this will start um, telling the viewer, oh, maybe there's maybe there's a little bit of a um, of a, a forest or something in through here. So adding a little bit of that green to it. You could even um, establish like a dark um, forest line by taking those darker colors and just kind of popping up these little tiny undulated, these little tiny um, treetops in through here. So that was just the dark blue plus a little bit of the green. And again, I'll come back with a with a, another pass to make, well, actually, let me just make them a little bit lighter now. So I want to put a little bit of lightness on this side too. So I'm going to pick up some, or I'm going to make like a rusty yellowy tone. So burnt sienna yellow and maybe a touch of white is going to give me some nice vibrant kind of um, marks on that lit up side. So I want for this one, I'm going to have it pretty darn light up at the top. And then if I want there to be kind of like some streakiness coming down, I just uh, try not to, um, if I want it to be rocky, I'm trying not to overdo um, the painting. I really just want to give it that, um, the, the, the information on that left hand side. But if I want there to be a little looking like rocks, I also can do, I just picked up some brown, I can do some horizontal lines. So horizontal is going to give you almost that those little um, layers of rocks and the vertical is going to give you kind of the um, the way that the that the rocks kind of are breaking off or they fall to the ground. So I'm just kind of putting some lightness in through here. I'll come back with one final pass to um, put some grass or the trees and stuff in here. But right now I just wanted to uh, get some of these rusty tones in through here. That looks pretty good. There we go. And now I'm going to move on to the next one while this is kind of settling. That looks nice. So this one uh, in through here, this is going to be a, I'm going to use my blender brush for this one. And uh, my biggest goal on here is just to smooth it out. I want the tops to be just a little bit darker. They're going to be round kind of smooth tops here. And then as they move towards the viewer, I'll be putting a little bit more um, visual details like little treetops. So I know that I already have this color in through here. I'm going to work from the back ones forward. So I have that uh, grayish color. And I don't necessarily need them to all be the same. So if I want to add a tiny bit of um, darkness to it, I can just pick up a little bit of one of the darker tones on my palette and then I want to blend it down until it's light going into the next one. So again, just picking up that. And if you wanted it to have a little bit of that um, sunsetty vibe, you can, like I just picked up a tiny bit of the burnt sienna, you can start introducing the burnt sienna, that was a little bit too much, the burnt sienna into your tones a little bit. And then I just allow for myself to almost dry brush it down to the next one. So it's going to look a little bit lighter as it goes into the valley. This is a really simple um, type of mountain that I use a lot in my paintings in order to show depth in that landscape. So if you're having trouble you know, with like dead space behind a pretty scenery, sticking these these distant hills or mountains 
in the painting can really show lots of depth to it. And you can even, um, as I'm coming towards the viewer, I'm picking up a little bit uh, more brown and you can start to pop up little additional details at the tops of these hills and just cross them over one another so you can have different um, different peaks and valleys and again I put the darkest color up at the top you can even pick up a little bit of white as you're going down towards that valley so that way that would ensure that you've got a little bit of that lighter tone going down into the valley and you can certainly use more um, colors within yours you could use more purples or blues as you're going farther away in the um, in the landscape that is just going to uh, as we as we look at landscapes our eyes can all they see fewer colors the farther away that the landscape goes so that's where you that's where the saturation of colors um, has an effect the farther away in a landscape you go because our eyes can't see it. <laughs> I can't see certain colors like red. And so again, I do my dark at the top. I can pull in a little bit of lightness towards the bottom. And then the, the hills are getting more saturated in color as they're coming towards the viewer. So I'm starting now to pick up some brown and green as I'm coming towards the viewer. I'm really um, just doing another layer on them at this point to to smooth them out. You can certainly have a lighter or a darker side too. So as you're going through yours, if, you, if you've established your sun is over on the left or over on the right, the, um, the, the light side of the hills would be on whatever side your light source is. So for me, I've just kind of got mine in a generic kind of way, <laughs> not, not too um, distinct as to where it is, but you could certainly do that and of course as I'm coming towards the viewer I'm allowing for a little bit more information in these in these hills to be um, visible so I'm putting more green on my brush I do feel like I want to establish a little bit I'm going to pick up a, a touch of yellow and uh, white or that uh, little rusty combination that I used and I'm going to just put a little bit of this on these sides and through here just give myself just a little bit more um, of an effect. There we go. And then at, on this land in through here, I can do whatever I want. I can I can pick up maybe a little bit of green and black and start to just kind of add little extra maybe trees and stuff coming up in that foreground but I'm just bringing it closer to the viewer. With these little details um, that I'm doing right now, in my head I'm saying, oh, maybe this is a little forest. I'm picking up some more green. You could put um, hills that are closer to the viewer as if you know we're sitting on top of one of the hills. So you can really um, explore whatever kind of full landscape that you want, but this is just kind of a, a quick um, way to bring it closer to the viewer. So that's going to be um, all I do for that one for now. And then this one down here, this is going to be my really snow-capped kind of hills. So I am going to switch to my um, to my palette knife here, and I'm going to do the right side of these is going to be um, lit up a little bit more, and the left side is going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white uh, to start. And I'm going to say, okay, I really want this, this hill in through here to have a lot of snow on it. So I'm going to push my palette knife uh, to kind of create that top edge. And then you could use the skinny side or the thick side. Um, I'm going to kind of put the peak in through here. And then I can just kind of pull it down in various ways. Um, I think I need to put a little bit more brown on my brush or on my tool, there we go. So I'm at an awkward angle here too, <laughs> there we go. So now I've got both the white and the brown kind of playing with each other and allowing for um, 
I'm at a, I'm at a fun angle here, <laughs> allows for them to just kind of work together and allow for a very organic look on that lit up side of, of the mallet. And then you can just kind of pull it out towards that, towards that left hand side or wherever you want that peak to kind of to fall off. Maybe there's a little tiny bit on the top. Just try not to make it look too perfect. And then as I go through these, I can do the same thing. So I'm, I'm doing the snow side first. I'm gonna kind of pop a little bit on in through here. And then I can take it and put that peak on there and then just play with this, just allowing for it to a lot uh, to have those bright spots and dark spots as it comes down and you can put even more on your brush or, or your tool or less whatever kind of works for you just get this one on over in through here oh that one's going to grow a little bit on me it's okay and then i can just kind of scrape it and pull it out to allow for those bright peaks if i want one in through here if i want one to be in the front i can put it right in through here put that bright part on and then allow for that peak to just dictate what's going to what's going to happen with that snow. I'm just going to kind of allow the carefreeness of my of my tool to kind of help me along there. Um, this back side over here, maybe I've got a little bit over here. I probably should have done this back one first, but that's okay. Allowing that to just kind of pop down and through there. So I guess it would make sense to do the back ones first. So we're just going to kind of do that. We'll put one in front of that. There we go. And then we'll put this one kind of in front. There we go. And then this one's going to sneak back here. And then this one, maybe we'll put that one in front like that. And again, have whatever kind of fun that you want with them. Then I'm on the dark side, I can add some blues. So I'm going to go with that dark blue that we created up in through here. And maybe a little bit of... Uh, ultramarine blue and I'm gonna in essence kind of do a similar process I want to keep some of that color underneath that I already had so I'm just gonna allow for some a couple of little dark tones in through here allowing for some carefreeness oh there was some little white on my brush or my tool there so that's gonna get some extra little some extra little white pieces that's good and then down at the bottom, it, it, in through where it's going to meet that land, it's a matter of kind of just diffusing it. So I can use that bristle brush and I can, with a little bit of water on my brush, I can just kind of diffuse this out. I do want to make sure that it, you know, I can see the difference between the, um, the hill and say the sky. So as I'm kind of diffusing this out. If there was a little spot like in through here that I needed to take care of, I can just pick up a little bit more of my brown and just make sure that I've got that um, taken care of. I think that that looks pretty cool. And then what I'll do on this one is as I come down in through here, I'm just gonna put some fun pine trees in here, but I want them to kind of move towards the viewer as opposed to um, just putting them on. I'm going to actually pick up a little bit more uh, brown just to kind of finish out up in through here. There we go. There was a couple of little spots I missed. Um, and down in through here, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my uh, black and my dark blue and put some little pine trees back in through here. So this is just black and dark blue. I'm working with my half inch bristle brush right now and I'm going right just to the bottom of um, the mountains to give myself this carefree um, little landscape edge. And then I can pick up some green and I can put in additional little pine trees that are closer to the viewer. So I'm just, I'm just going with something that looks like it's pointy at the top, um, establishing you could even show if there was little white spots, you could have some snow on the ground down here too if you wanted to, that'll be totally up to you. And then maybe back to a little bit of black just to um, close out some of these uh, little gaps and just make it look a little bit pine tree-esque 
with um, these triangular type of tops. So that's just a really quick um, way to do this type of um, these type of mounts. I'm going to go back up to the top one so we can make that look a little bit more rock like. Um, I'm going to use my um, my small shader and I want to add a couple more little highlights to it. So I'm going to go with uh, that uh, yellow, white, and rust, but make it a little bit uh, lighter. So almost like a pale, light yellow. And this is going to allow me to put some, some really nice kind of um, bright, maybe a little bit more white than that. Just these uh, light um, highlights to the rocks to give them that texture. I think as we're doing rocks it's, or mountains, it's really difficult uh, to not get hung up and lost in all of the details. So as I'm doing them, I, I definitely like to um, work my way from um, sim a simple process into, th into um, these little details. That helps me to uh, not get lost not get hung up on the on the little details right now I'm just adding some highlight um, onto the brighter side of uh, a brighter kind of top side of these of these hills or of these mountains you can even kind of pull some in through here and then I would just step back and and dissect it do I want more do I want less so I feel like I want a little bit more uh, darkness in through here so I just picked up a little bit of that dark blue plus a, a touch of black to maybe uh, push these shadows in between the the um, mountains a little bit further so again I have a little bit more black on my brush right now with that dark blue and that's going to push these shadows further and it's going to give the actual mountains a little bit more dimension to them so when you're when you're doing yours if it's feeling like it's flat it's probably because it doesn't have enough contrast in those colors um, i can even use a little bit of my burnt sienna in order to get these to have more of um, those horizontal type of um, lines associated with them uh, as you these can represent kind of the the um the mountains that you see like in Arizona or the places with some really beautiful high tall jagged type of um, rocks so I, right now I'm just kind of adding some more some burnt sienna to these and I'm again trying not to be overly consistent um, in where I'm doing it but to give it that um, trying to give it that overall um, I have shadows I have dark sides of the hills and then I have the light sides of the hills and that as long as I can kind of keep that in my in my head and what type of texture I want to add to them or have um, represented in them that helps me to um, give them a more believable look and I can keep playing with it I just put picked up a little bit more of that light yellow just to kind of pop onto these and, and you can of course increase any of those little tones that you feel might uh, benefit you and then I for the bottom of this one I'm just going to go back to that bristle brush just to show you how I could close this one out just like I closed out the other ones with uh, or the bottom one with just some green grass I can put um, some green and yellow and maybe maybe this one is more of like a little grassland so maybe I just do some some um, stippling or whatever at the bottom of this I'm finding some light areas and just kind of enhancing them um, maybe that one looks like a little bit of a field or something like that so I'm just going to dot this one um, making more yellows and vibrant greens as it comes closer to uh, the viewer I'm going to pick up a little bit more white and maybe a touch of burnt sienna and just kind of tap in maybe we've got who knows a field of sorts and then on this guy right in through here, I, pro I feel like I'm pretty close to, to um, where I want it to go, but I'm going to uh, use my blender again just to um, maybe uh, I feel like I need s s a little bit something more. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and a touch of um, brown. So burnt sienna 
and a touch of brown just to kind of deepen some of these, maybe some of the left side and the right side, just to put a little bit more tones in them so those hills don't feel um, just flat. So I'm putting almost like a darker side on one side of them. And that's something that you can certainly do. Um, picking up a little bit more blue on my brush just to, again, throw some of these sides of the hills back just a little bit. And then of course you can fiddle with it as much as you want. So I feel like these are nice and soft and they look like they're nice and off in the distance, but you could certainly play with them as much as you want. And I think that that is a good representation of three pretty simple ways to make mountains. You can, of course, you know, this was an exercise. It was a way to, to just, you know, practice with different types of mountains and using different brushes. So you can certainly play with it as much as you want. Fiddle, keep making it softer, keep making it brighter, whatever, whatever works for you. And then if you want, you can of course sign it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna sign mine. Maybe I'll sign them on the back or something. Um, and then that's gonna conclude the mountain making process. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, hope you got a couple of good tips and I look forward to painting with you again sometime.